Hey everyone, welcome back. This will be episode number seven of Learning PLC Motion Control. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, something called PLC Open. So I've went to their website here. Uh, essentially, we'll keep this very brief, but PLC Open is a set of standards that was developed back in 92, uh, headquartered out of the Netherlands. And what they do essentially is like IEC 61131-3 did. Let me zoom in on that. Uh, we talked about this in the first series, and what they did was standardize a lot of the, the languages that PLCs were going to use. So like that and building upon that, PLC Open does a few things, but what we're going to focus on is their actual motion control section. So what they've done is try to standardize on how motion behaves within a PLC. So that's everything from simple point-to-point -point moves to coordinated motion, all this homing procedures, all these different things. And so they've managed to get quite a few vendors to buy into this. And uh, it's like a consortium, essentially, that once a vendor chooses that they're going to do it, then they get to say they use this standard, and then more people will be likely to adopt them. So I've seen quite a bit of stuff where people force you into a vendor if you're going to make a machine for them because that's their standard. So you see that with Rockwell Automation quite often. But the good thing to know is that within kind of the PLC separate from Rockwell Automation, and, and including them as well a little bit, but in things like Beckoff Twincat, Siemens, uh, a lot of the different brands that run IEC 61131-3, they also support PLC Open Motion Control. Bosch is the same way, uh, and there's pro I think there's a couple hundred other vendors total out there, and many of them support PLC Open at least you know unofficially, if not completely, as part of their uh, LinkedIn vendor. So, anyway, the point of this is to show you that this is the basis for what we're going to be doing, and the good part about that is. Once you know this, if you want to go get a job somewhere and you say, I know how to use PLC Open Motion, then you've already pretty much been trained on 30 different vendors or more. So that's why that's important. It's the same way that IEC 61131-3 is important for that same way with regular PLC programming. So what you get from, from a PLC Open is a list of function blocks and sort of how they function. So every one of them that has a PLC open compatibility is going to have something motion control move absolute for instance. This is just one function block but this is what the CFC graphical representation would look like. So you'd end up with an axis reference in and an axis reference out. All the ones on the left are inputs, all the ones on the right are outputs. And you just have you know some parameters for the move, position velocity, A cell, D cell jerk, the direction of the move, if you're buffering that move, which is like kind of blending it with a previous move, and then you've got done, busy, active, aborted, error, error ID. So all these use common error IDs and things like that. So it's very helpful. There's all these different commands, and then there's the extended set of commands and all that. So once you sort of understand how the system works and how you can program a machine with it, then you can do that on a lot of different vendors. So that's why I wanted to talk about PLC Open, and that's about all I'm going to say about it. But we are going to bring in the library that lets us use this in Beckoff. Okay, we're back in Beckoff TwinCab PLC here. I'm going to go to References and right-click and go to Add Library. This is the list of all the references that are available in the system. So these are the built-in ones. Mostly you can make and add your own references externally if you want to. We don't need to do that right now, though. So. PTP is point-to-point, -point. NCI is NC interpolated. We're not going to get into that right now. Uh, I may touch on it at the end of this series, but for now, we need MC2, and we also need NC, numerical control, which I believe supports MC2. But we're going to go ahead and add in one of these at a time. That's all it lets us add. Motion, PTP, NC. Okay, so now I usually like to build the project. Uh, to make sure we don't have any missing dependencies for those libraries, but I know we should be good now. So the next thing I'll do is do an axis B, which is what our axis ended up being over here. Axis 2 here is axis B, really. So I'll just call that axis B. And then here we need an axis ref. And so this actually, if you were to highlight it here, come on now. All right, we'll do go to definition check that out okay so there's our axis ref you can see what it is and where it lives so it lives in this tc2 mc2 library and it's got all this different stuff basically so um 
We don't need to worry too much about what it is yet. I'll show you a live view here of it in just a minute. All right, so once you have this axis ref here, it actually includes some of these percent I star sort of things, and it's, it's basically built in here. You don't need to worry too much about how it works. But as soon as you've built the project successfully with zero errors, then you should be able to run over to axis B here, link to PLC, and you'll see it showing up here, wherever you've defined that axis ref. In my case, it's right in the main program in the ver section. So uh, we'll link that up right like that, and after that, save and activate. Okay, once I'm in run mode, I can open up this axis now, make things a little bigger so we can see. And I have two main structures here, PLC to NC and NC to PLC. So these are what are actually leaving the PLC and going into this NC system. So it kind of bridges across here. If I look at that, the PLC to NC, these are things that I am sending to the actual NC system so that it can send them to the drive. And then NC to PLC are things like uh, status coming back from the drive, the NC side, to my PLC. And so things like uh, this op mode D word, this is important stuff. It's a lot of bits going on. So actually I can do view, uh, let's see, display mode binary. So there's all sorts of bits going on in here. And some of these are status, like I have power on my drive. I don't have power, or, you know, I'm at a standstill. I'm not. But you don't have to worry about what all those are. You could program directly to those if you really wanted to, but using this PLC open function blocks is a much better way to go about it. So I'll go ahead and set this display mode back to uh, what I'm used to, decimal. Uh, actual position here, this is right out of NC. So this will match what we saw over here. If I look at, uh, let's open this guy up, go to online, this number, the same thing. So if we jog it here, we'll see it in our PLC in the NC to PLC section, so actual position. So you get the velocity, it's just bouncing around because it's just noise in the encoder and stuff like that, little tiny amounts. And uh, the set position, stuff like that. Um, and that's about it for that. There's some ADS information. This is how the this you can talk to the drive. You can fill this in if you want and uh, pull error messages and such into the PLC. I'm not gonna worry about that. Status is a, a kind of a constellation of bits here the mode or the an enumeration for the mode of the drive um, we've got the axis stopped not moving uh, which are different surprisingly enough stopped and not moving uh, point to point mode whether it's coupled or geared or not just all these different things that are good to check if it's moving in the positive direction or negative direction uh, so if you need to kind of check on a servo drive and see if it's doing what you said or what you told it to do this would be where you would do it that this gets populated by this call down here. So if, if these are blank, it's probably because you forgot to call these. So anyway, that's about all I really wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I'll pop into the actual function blocks next of the PLC open. So we've set that up to where we can access them now uh, with TCMC2. And we'll power up the drive and see if we can get some very basic motion going out of the PLC. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.